Good afternoon, Miss Whitaker. Hello. Is Dr. Terrence busy? Just a moment, I'll see. Now, don't tell me there's a patient out there. The shock would be too great. No, Miss Whitaker. Shall I ask her to come in? Please do. I came to say goodbye, Richard. Goodbye? Yes. I'm sailing for Europe with Aunt Harriet. Don't look so surprised. I told you I was going, didn't I? Did you think I was bluffing? You didn't seem to care what I thought. Well, after all, Richard, I did propose to you. Twice. Why can't you try to understand, Joan? You know I love you. Please marry me, Richard. Please wait for me. It's no use. Every time we talk about it, we come right back to where we started. Now, you listen to me, Joan. About all I have in the world is my medical diploma in this office. Well, the diploma's paid for all right. The office rent isn't. But father would help us. I'd make him. You're wrong, Joan. You know he'd never give us any help, and I wouldn't take it. That's the third time you rejected me, Richard, and the last. All right. Maybe I'll find somebody who'll do the proposing to me. They say ships are simply packed with them. Handsome and interesting, and rich, too. Joan. Anyway, that's not what I came to talk about. I just came to say goodbye and... And to ask you to do something for me. Something very important. It's about my sister. Celia's going to be terribly lonesome without you. Will you try to see her more often while I'm away? She'll have nobody but father and... Well, that means she'll be pretty much alone. If she doesn't come to see you, please call on her. The only person who can help her is herself. I've told her that. All the same, you have helped her. There's nothing the matter with her, really. Except that sometimes, somehow, she was very cruelly hurt. Ever since then, she's avoided people, afraid of being hurt again, I suppose. Have you any idea how the trouble started? All I know is that she had some sort of shock during the war. I asked Mother just before she died, but I didn't learn anything from her either. Richard, you will try to see Celia often while I'm away. She means more to me than anybody in the world. She isn't the only person who's going to be lonesome when you're away. Please. Oh, all right, we won't talk about me. Now, don't you worry about Celia. I'll call on her so much, I'll make a nuisance of myself. <laughs> you couldn't be that. Well, thanks, Richard, and goodbye. Goodbye, Joan. Cemetery where the boys all didn't rob from making back and forth. Why didn't they join the fun? You've got to pull yourself out of this. Remember what Dr. Terrence said. Dr. Terrence is my friend and he's helped me greatly, but he doesn't know what you know, Echo. Listen, Miss Celia. Yes, yes, I know. It's, it's just an old fashioned Fourth of July celebration. And I'm acting as if it was a war all over again. But when I see uniforms and hear drums, I just can't help it. There's no use in torturing yourself with memories after all these years. I know, Eccles. I know I've just got to learn to forget. Oh, Michael. Michael, I've got to learn to forget. Sometimes I think the dead have no real peace until we do forget. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Celia. <laughs> Excuse me, Eccles. I don't know how you've lived with me all these years. Hello, Jigger. Come on. Oh, what's the matter, Jigger? Are you scared, too? Or is it just that you miss Joan? Hmm? Come on. Let's know about it. What? Oh, dear me. I see the Baron Garrier is due tomorrow. It'll probably bring another letter from Miss Joan. Oh, Echoes. I don't think I read you this, this bit in her last letter. Europe is a stuffy place full of Aunt Harriet's and old men of 40. Hmm, must be nice to think of a man of 40 as old. Not for the man of 40. It's funny to be interested in tomorrow the way I am and find everybody else poking around in the ash cans of history looking for yesterdays. People who haven't done it tomorrow's 
like to hold on to their yesterday's job. I do wish you'd drive out to the woods, like you used to every 4th of July. We are not afraid of a few silly noises, are we, Jiggers? Hmm? I'm going to get down to work. Do you know how? No. I'll take my book and I will go to the woods. Will you telephone Jim to have the car ready? Come on, Jiggers. Let's go change. Hello, James. Will you please get the car ready for Miss Celia? Where to? Oak Grove. It's about the only place she ever goes. Eccles, the flower is ordered for tomorrow? Yes. They'll be here an hour before Miss Jones' train arrives. Where do you want me to hang the Burlington picture, Miss Celia? Over the dressing table. Oh, it's always been in your room. Somehow I feel that it belongs there. Oh, nonsense. Joe loves it. I want it to be the first thing she sees when she comes in. Now, I think everything's ready. Except Jiggers. You need a bath, old fella. Come on. Stand still like a good boy and get good and dry. That's my hand. Celia! Celia! June! Celia! June! Oh, John the Christmas! Oh, <laughs> oh, my dear. Oh, it's so good to see you. Sorry if we didn't expect you, but I haven't seen you. I can hardly wait to get here. <laughs> Jiggers! <laughs> What's happened to your dignity? You don't know how glad we are to see you, Miss Jones. <laughs> Maybe you think I'm nice, lad. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't think you can settle and get your whiskers dry. I'll fix it in a different. But, Joan, tell me, how'd you get here so soon? I flew. Oh, darling, why did you fly? It meant seeing you a whole day sooner. And I couldn't resist when a brand new bow offered me a ride in a private plane. A bow? Why, what do you mean? Didn't I write you about him? No. His name's David Eastman. He's some kind of a scientist. You know, one of those sciences that end in, uh, ology. Oh, I see. That makes it all quite clear. A sort of ologist, is that what you mean? Yes, but that's only a hobby. He's awfully rich. Oh, did you miss me? Oh, dreadfully. Joan, tell me more about him. Oh, he's just a man. I bought you some new dresses. Attractive? Attractive? They're Paris in bloom. Wait till you see oh, them. Oh, no, no, dear. I mean the man. Well, I wouldn't call him attractive exactly. Young? Oh, no, quite old. I'll bet he's every day of 40. <laughs> but I respect him enormously. Oh, well, if that's all, I needn't worry. I don't want to lose you, especially to a millionaire and anthologist. I'll marry somebody, I hope. Someday. Well, of course you will, dear. But, Joan, you're not yet. You're too young. Darling, I'm not in the cradle anymore. Why, I'm having a coming out party next month. Aunt Harriet promised to talk father into it. And Mr. Eastman is going to dust off his aeroplane and fly here for the party. That must be Eastman's ship. Hello. How nice. You really came. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. <laughs> First chance I've had to say hello. Hello. What are your impressions of America, Mr. Eastman? It's one of my favorite continents. Have you seen our new Chamber of Commerce building? No, but I admire it immensely. And what do you think of our American women, Mr. Eastman? Oh, far superior to the Zulu, Zambezi, Kaffir, and Maori. In fact, I endorse them highly. You can quote me. There's one young specimen who's taken my fancy especially. Our readers will be simply thrilled, Mr. Eastman. Uh, what is she like? Well, she's pretty, fun-loving, charming, and graceful. Mm, what a wonderful creature. Is she clever, too? Right now, I'm hoping she's very foolish. Foolish enough to marry me. Why, Mr. Eastman, how you do go on. Uh, I think maybe we'd, we'd better be moving along. Is that your answer? I decline to talk for publication. 
Ask me again tomorrow, David. Right. Will you ride with me in the park in the morning at 8? Eight? eight? Hmm? My sister Celia goes wandering in the park at that hour, but not I. I did wake up at 8 once, just to show that I could. Huh. Then, when I proved the triumph of mind over matter, I went back to sleep. Then I won't see you till the party, eh? At lunch, if you like, David. Right. But remember, you're not to ask me again till the party. Orders is orders. Who did that? Some little boys. They ran away. Well, he'll be as good as new in a minute. Shall I hold your horse? Well, it isn't necessary, but he'd be flattered. Now, now, hold still, young fella. There we are. There comes the other one. Oh, no, 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 no. Poor little fella. Say thanks to the lady. Hmm? Please, please let him go. All right, Pop. Lady says you're excused. <laughs> There's a fine example of civilization. Thank you. I've spent most of my life among savages. If I ever go back, I'll tell them about a strange country across the ocean where they torture dogs for fun. Well, what do the savages do with them? They eat them. Well, somehow, I feel the pup would rather have a sparkler tied to his tail than a sprig of parsley or for, for whatever it is they eat them with. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. My own life is all tied in nuts. You? Mm-hmm. But you look so sure of yourself. Why? Because I speak to a strange lady in the park? Well, if we'd been properly introduced, I'd probably have muttered, it's a nice day, isn't it? And then I wouldn't have had any more to say. Instead, let's sit down a minute. Do you mind? Oh, I, I really think I, I must go home. Oh, please. Be as kind to me as you were to that pup. You see, I've always lived in faraway places that are... Well, strange little spots on the map to most people. So now I'm in a spot where I need the advice of a civilized lady. Oh, I'm afraid there are some people who don't think I'm very civilized. As a matter of fact, I'm rather out of things myself. Oh, well, in that case, you won't mind our not being introduced. You won't ask me who in blazes I am and what I mean by asking for your advice. Well, I I'm afraid if I could help you, it would be a case of the blind leading the blind. Well, my problem is that I've got something that I ought to want. Does that sound strange? Strange? Sounds to me as if you're a very lucky man. I'm not so sure of that. I think it's frightening not to be sure you're sure that you want something you ought to want. Do you follow me? Yes, but I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> well, the fact of the matter is I met a young, attractive girl, and I proposed to her, and... and... she said no? She's to give me my answer tonight. You think she'll say no? No. Oh. Well, what's the trouble? It's impossible that a youngster of her age, brimming over with life and fun, could love me. Mm, then I think she'll say no. Unless... Uh... You mean you're rich? No, no, no. She's too fine for that. What I'm afraid of is that she's dazzled in a schoolgirl sort of way by a proposal from someone who, you know, seems to be a man of the world. You love her? Why, well, yes. I'm pretty sure I love her. What are you pretty sure of? I probably sound very muddle-headed. As a matter of fact, I'm absolutely sure I love her. I'm afraid I'm being rather a bounder. No, I don't think so. Well, what would you advise me to do? Well, if you're feeling really muddle-headed about her, I'd advise you to tell her exactly what you told me. Suppose you misunderstood? I have a feeling she won't. Advice has done me some good after all. Do you know, I found myself talking to a strange man that I didn't know, forgetting all my own problems, worrying about his. 
Who did you say you'd met? A young, kind, witty, handsome gentleman. Don't look so disapproving. I didn't flirt with him. At least not much. Richard, don't you appreciate a lady's little confidences? Why, you haven't been to see me since Joan got back. And when I come to see you, I... Richard, I don't believe you're even listening. Yes, I am. Well, what was I talking about? A man you met somewhere or other. Who did you say he was? Are you in trouble, Richard? I don't want to be rude, but there are times when a man wants to be alone. Now you know how I've felt for years and years. Why, Richard, I only wanted to thank you for your friendship and for what your advice has done for me. Oh, I'll be all right. Only just for the moment, you caught me off my guard. You're very young, Richard Sheridan. That's one trouble I'll get over. Well, maybe you'll get over all the others, too. Maybe. The funny thing is, I knew this would have to happen. I've told myself a hundred times Joan wasn't for me. The trouble is, I didn't know myself how bad it was until it was too late. Well, now I've done my baby act. What do you think of a doctor like that? I think you're everything a doctor should be. Very human yourself. Now, you sit down here. I'm going to prescribe for you. Very well, Dr. Whitaker. All right. Dr. Whitaker's going to prescribe your own medicine. Face life instead of running away from it. Fight for your happiness. Instead of staring out of the window looking tragic, do what you can. Even though it's very little, it may mean more than you think for a girl like Joan. Hello. I'm glad you came. Where have you been keeping yourself, you old hermit? Oh, I've been a little busy. Celia here? Oh, no, she wouldn't come down. You know how she feels about crowds. How about a dance? Oh, I'm sorry. I promised this one to David. But you can have the next one, Richard. Oh, David, uh, this is Dr. Terrence, Miss Eastman. How do you do? Hello. Until the night, I've always thought that formal things like coming out of parties were a bore. Now I'm beginning to think they have their points. Yes, just what are they? Well, well, here comes one now. Hello, Mr. Eastman. Hello. No fair. You're monopolizing all the men. No, oh, Miss Haskins, this is Dr. Terrence. How do you do? All my life I want to know a young, handsome doctor. But they're always pressing a piece of wood on my tongue. And they won't let me say anything but ah. My name's Irma. Do you dance? Well, I... I'll bet you sit out a mean dance. See you later, Richard. Not if I can help it. You look awful serious. You're not going to stick a slab of wood down my throat, are you? Please don't. All I have to do is look at you to say, ah. Could you excuse me a moment? There's a patient of mine back there. I'd like to see how he's getting along. Miss Caesar, I hate going way off to Canada and leaving you, but I haven't seen my brother in years. Of course you must. But I don't know what I'm going to do without you, Eccles. Oh, you'll be all right now. After all, I'm only going on a little motor trip. Just as soon as we settle down anywhere, I'll send you an address. That's right. Thank you, Eccles. Elliot, this party was a good idea. It's a long time since we had this social life in this house. It'll be a long time before you find another David Eastman. I don't want to find another one. This one will do nicely. Your sister Harriet does have a use in it, Stephen. Good evening, Mr. Whitaker. Good evening, Irma. You know, this would be a nice party. His father would stop giving me those fatherly looks, and Aunt Harriet, her most Aunt Harrietish one. I think it's a nice party anyway. You're not going, are you? Yeah. But the party's still young. Maybe so, but I'd be an old man before I got a chance to dance with you. Anyway, early to bed and early to rise. Makes little doctors healthy, wealthy, and very wise guys. Couldn't you lose a little health and wealth and wisdom for me? What's the matter with Eastman? He's got plenty of all three, especially the wealth. Richard. Why look so shocked? You told me you were going to get yourself a rich guy, didn't you? Well, you didn't think I was serious. What would anybody think? Use a little common sense. Common sense? What's the use of kidding yourself, Joan? You have a right to marry a rich man if you want to. 
I have a right to. You're very smart, Dr. Terence. You cured me. Thank you. You look upset? Why, well, I'm just a bit tired. I was wondering whether I'd trodden on your toes in some way. Oh, not at all. There isn't a better dancer here than you. Well, thanks. When I dance well, that's news. Giving out interviews again, huh? <laughs> well, in that case, have you anything to say before we go to press? Joan, there's something I've been trying to get up courage all evening to say to you. Poor David, is it as difficult as that? Well... Come on, the questions and answers department is closing. Well, my dear, I hardly know what to say. I do. The answer is yes. Why, Joan, you mean we're engaged? Yes, but... But what? I haven't seen a managing editor yet. <laughs> Who is that, your father? No, no, my sister Celia. I want her to be the first one to hear. Hello, Richard. Why don't you downstairs at the party? Party's over for me. What? I just wanted to thank you for your advice and tell you I was too much of a fool to take it. Now what's happened? Just what I told you. I behaved like an idiot. What have you done? Quarreled with Joan? I knew it would happen the minute I saw that fellow Eastman. I came here tonight to ask Joan to marry me. Instead, I behaved like a stupid, blundering, jealous... You behaved exactly like a man in love. Well, that's that. I'm all washed up. Certainly not going to whine about it. Oh, don't look so solemn, Richard. The battle isn't over. All is not lost. Not even honor. Besides... I'm going to fight for you. For heaven's sake, don't. I'd look like a sap running to her sister for help. See ya. Wait a minute, Richard. Come in, Joan. Oh, I... I was just going. Oh, don't go. David, come in. Celia, this is David Eastman. Eastman. Please like him because I... I've just told him I'm going to marry him. Congratulations, Mr. Eastman. Thanks. Joan has told me a great deal about you, Miss Whittaker. Isn't she a darling? She's told me a lot about you, too. Not the truth, I hope. Oh, good night. Good luck. Good night, Mrs. We're going to be married soon. Next month. And you're going to be my maid of honor. Don't look so surprised. Mr. Eastman seems a little surprised himself. Now, don't tease him. He's all flustered already. Aren't you going to say something, Celia? I think I'd like to speak to Mr. Eastman alone for a moment, if you don't mind, Joan. Uh, later, darling. Poor David has to go through all this again with... with Father. I'll be down in a minute, Joan. Your sister and I ought to get acquainted. All right. I'll lend it to you for a minute. I'll be waiting downstairs, David. Right. Thank you for not telling Joan about our talk in the park. You're a gentleman. Won't you call me, David? Make it a little easier for me to take what's coming to me. I wasn't being tactful. If I thought it would do any good, I'd have told you. I know what you must think of me. No, you don't. I like you. All the same... I know I didn't sound particularly happy this morning. But you must realize it's because of Joan's youth and the fear that I was the wrong man for her. I do love Joan. Please believe me. But that's only half of it. Does Joan love you? Well, when she tells me she does, I have to believe her. You can charge that up to my vanity. Forgive me, but I don't feel this marriage should take place. If I find I'm right, I shall declare war on it. I wanted you to be my friend. You'd be the most charming enemy a man ever had. Good night, Celia. Good night.
Hello, Joan. What have you got? A telegram. Oh, is it for me? No, it's from David. Oh, dear, I hoped it was from Echo. I wish that woman would come back. I can't find a thing without her. <laughs> you know, it's three weeks and I haven't heard a word. What's David got to say? He's getting back from New York today. And we're going to dinner. The three of us. No, darling, you and David are going to have dinner with me. Why, Senior, you're coming out of your shell. <laughs> Where are we going? Well, do you remember a little house near the patch of woods? Where I used to take you when you were very, very, very little? Yes. Well, I bought it. All for myself. That place? Mm-hmm. Out in the middle of nowhere? I wish you hadn't. Didn't I tell you you're coming to live with us? Sorry, Joan, but I made my plans before I knew about you and David. I was hoping we'd go someplace and dance. I wanted you and David to get better acquainted. Do things my way, Joan. Just for tonight. All right, darling. Oh, Joan. Wait a minute. I want to give you something. I've always meant you to have them someday. Wear these for me. Why, they're almost the color of your eyes. They mean a great deal to me. Will you wear them tonight? And I shall see all that's beautiful in my world together. Well, only five more days and I'll be a married woman. Okay. But I wish all the rigmarole were over. Do we have to have a formal wedding? No, thank you. All we really need is a parson and seal you for a witness. Father would raise the roof. Why, he spent two hours telling the man just how to engrave the invitations. Oh, the tortures of a civilized wedding. Well, it might make a very good title for one of your books. Have you written books? Why, yes, a few. Why didn't you tell me? Only a man's enemies talk about his books. I'm going to read them right away. What are they called? Well, one of them was called Taboos and Fetishes. I heard somebody read one of my books, so it was you. <laughs> and there was another one called uh, uh, Marriage Customs in Zululand, is that right? Mm -hmm. And Primitive Anthropomorphism. Oh, Primitive Anthropo... Now you see why I didn't tell you? <laughs> Where did you get hold of David's books? The bottom. If I remember rightly, on the title page of one of them, they called you Professor Eastman of some university or other. Hmm? David, you a college professor? I plead guilty, but that was years ago. I've reformed. I know you're going to be a good enough sport to try and share Joan's interests from now on. He won't have to. I'll share his. I'm going to read his books tonight. Not all of them, I hope. The shortest is 500 pages. Well, if Celia can understand them, I can. I'll read them if it kills me. Why, Joan, is that kind? You make David sound like some sort of literary murderer. After all, you know, you can read until it hurts, but not till it kills. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to make a fool of me. She was laughing at me, not you. Well, I'm not as dumb as she thinks. Why, Joan? Oh, Joan, please. We won't talk about my dull books anymore. No, I'm too dumb to understand them. I'll tell you one thing I do understand. I see everything now. Why, dear child, what do you mean? I'm not a child, and you know what I mean. I'm going home. Joan, please. Please take me home. David, will you be very nice and wait for Joan in the car? Right. Joan, what did you mean when you said you could see everything now? Never mind what I meant. I'm going home. You're cleverer than I am. I know you'll be able to talk me out of it. But I don't want to talk anymore. Joan, if you want to go home, darling, it's all right, but please. Please don't go this way. I can't bear to think that I've hurt you. Why don't you run to David? He'll give you sympathy. Oh, Joan. Joan, you don't know what you're saying. No. Here, you can have these. I don't know what they mean to you, and I don't care. Ever since my engagement, you've done nothing but interfere, and I know why. You never had any romance in your own life, but you don't want anybody else to have it. I've had romance. I've had romance. Oh, Michael. Michael. Michael! Michael! 
Michael, are you surprised that I left the dance to come on here? Oh, yes, I am. If you can get thrown out of Father's stupid old party, I guess I can walk out on it. Well, that was swell of you, Celia. Anyway, I didn't come to see you. You know, just before Father pounced on you, you, you told me you had a present for me. I came to get it. <gasps> Michael, how beautiful. And not as beautiful as the ones I'm going to buy you someday. Oh, but Michael, you shouldn't be so extravagant. You know you can't afford it. Can't afford it. Why, I'm richer than your father. What? Mm-hmm. I ordered that moon especially for you. And you see all those stars? I had 20 star polishers working overtime. Oh, don't tell me what I can't afford. All right, but if I find that you've been spending your lunch money on me, I'll... I'll... Go <laughs> for Michael. I won't scold you now. I bet you've had enough from Father. <laughs> what do you say? Well, forget it. I heard him say, young man, come into my study. I followed you from the dance floor. And I listened at the door. But I didn't hear much. No, you didn't miss much. He said, uh, young man, I was not aware that you'd been invited to this function. But Michael, didn't you tell him I'd invited you? Yeah, that's when he started to get really insulty. You impertinent young upstart. The nerve of a common, ordinary bank clerk. Daring to think that he can dance with his employer's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you mean uh, ex-bank clerk? What? Mm -hmm. Your father wasn't satisfied with throwing me out of the party. He fired me. Michael, he didn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Anyhow, you'll have something to put in your memoirs when you're the president of a bank twice as big as father's. <laughs> yes. Oh, darling Michael. If you can't darken my door again, I'll darken yours. What's the matter? Don't you think I'd make a good door darkener? <laughs> when you get home, I suppose he'll bully the life out of you for coming here. I don't care. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about it now. Come. Show me the grounds of the estate, my lord. Very well, my lady. In front of you, you see my private river, the Missouri. She flows into the Mississippi about five miles from here. A very satisfactory river, my lord. Oh, you like it? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's yours. Mm -hmm. Shall we inspect the castle? What? No drawbridge? <laughs> Just a second. Bad, is it? It's the very nicest room I was ever in. Ever hear of uh, Will Burlington? The artist who always the river? Mm -hmm. Of course, we've got one of his pictures. Well, this is his place. He loaned it to me when he went to Europe. Sit down, and I'll light the fire. Well, where's Celia? Haven't you sent for her? Yes, yeah, she'll be down in a minute. Stephen, from the way she's been acting ever since the night of the party, I'm afraid she's in love with the boy. Are you just waking up? It's a good thing somebody saw what was going on. But this trip to Europe will put a stop to it. I don't know, Stephen. Maybe it will. Maybe? Why maybe? If she's really in love. Love? Here I am with a nomination for governor, practically in my lap, and you talk about... That's the kind of help I get from you, Emily. If we're too hard on her, Stephen... My dear Emily... I'm spending I don't know how many thousands of this trip abroad, and you tell me I'm being hard on her. Well, do you think it's very easy on me, Celia, when in two days more you'll be on your way to Europe? Oh, Michael, Michael. Do you think we'll ever get father to understand? This Burlington place makes a pretty good hideout, doesn't it? If I was Whitaker, I'd hire a preacher instead of a detective. The boy's a nice fellow. Well, if Whitaker's the boss, I guess he knows what he wants. I'll wait here and you watch up by the house. All right. Darling, I'm sure to have a job soon. And when you get back, why, we'll run away and get married. Mm. But up until that time, you're his property. And I'm nobody. I'm not his property. And I belong to nobody. Mm. And I am glad I belong to you, Michael. I'm yours now, completely and forever. Michael. Someone watching us. Stay here. I'll take care of him. Well. 
Smith, what are you doing here? Admiring the view. Get out. When I get good and ready. Oh, Lord. Take your hand. Where you are. Is he, is he dead? No. Are you sure? Yes, and you better get out of here, Miss Whittaker. What are you going to do to Michael? Nothing until I talk to your father. Now, the sooner you go, the better. Oh, no. Yes, he's right, Celia. If you really want to help me, you go now. Help me get into a hospital. Well, young man, if you'd taken my advice, you wouldn't be in the fix you are now. I suppose you know he's dead. Dead? But, but I didn't mean to do it, Mr. Whitaker. You must know that. A man pulled a gun on me and I tried to get it that away. That story won't get you very far. Unless you want to drag Celia into the mess. Well, no, sir, of course I... But I can help you if you do as I say. Yes, sir. My car is waiting outside. Get into it. My chauffeur will drive you straight to Detroit tonight. Then you'd better get over the border to Canada as quickly as you can. Oh, but... There I... can't be any buts. If I didn't have powerful influence in this town, you'd be in jail right now. And I'm telling you frankly, it's only for Celia's sake that I'm hushing this up. Let me see you just for a moment, then I'll do anything you want. Celia doesn't want to see you. And she asked me to tell you not to write to her. Celia said that? Can't you understand why? She's afraid of being involved. You said you didn't want to drag her into this, didn't you? Yes, I... All right. Let, let me write her just one letter. I'll leave it here with you. There's not a moment to lose getting to the car. Send her letter back to the chauffeur. I'll see that she gets it. Come. Carol here will go with you and see that you get safely over the border. Eddie? Yes, sir? Show this young man into my car. Celia, dear, what's wrong? Tell me, Mother. I'm going away, that's all. Won't you tell me? Whatever it is, dear, I'm still your mother. I can't, Mother. It's just something I can't talk about. But I'm going away. Celia, darling, didn't you know your mother will stand by you through anything? Oh, mother. Mother, if I could... If I could only find Michael. Why? Oh, why don't you write to me? Oh, mother. Hey. Oh, mother. What's the idea of wandering around the house at all hours of the night? What's this? Stephen. You have to find that boy. I see. You common, miserable little... Stephen. If you take her part, you're as bad as she is. I wish I never had to set eyes up that again. You don't have to, Father. I'm going away. You think that's a way out? When everything connected with my family is news? No, you'll stay right here. And I suppose I'll have to find your... Michael. We traced him to Montreal. Yes. He shipped out as a deckhand on a liner bound for France. That boat is on its way back now, but he's not on it. Here's the report. It's a pity, now that I've managed to satisfy the police that Lou's death was an accident. Well, a lot of good that report does me. Why don't you get in touch with a detective agency in Paris? They ought to be able to find him. From now on, I'll handle this matter myself. Hello? Give me Mrs. Whittaker on the phone, please. Thanks, Carol. Hello. Emily? 
Remember that trip to France you didn't take? Well, you're taking it now. And I'm going along. Oh, it's very kind of me, is it? I'm simply delighted that you think so. Of course, it means giving up my chance for the governorship. But I'm glad to do it for you and that lovely daughter of yours. What's that? Oh, you're very sorry, are you? Well, that won't make me governor. I haven't any more time to talk. Start packing, please. Thank you, Father, for all you're doing to find Michael. If you think it's for your sake I'm doing it, you're mistaken. You the butler? Uh, we miss you. The English Miss Eccles. Eccles, Eccles. Uh, we miss you, Eccles, Eccles. Uh, she have engaged me because I speak so influentially English. I see. I want to see her. Tell her in your most influential English, uh, with or without gestures. Uh, without her gestures, monsieur? Yes. Oui, 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 oui. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Evelyn. Hello, Echo. Are you all right, Miss Whitaker? Yes, thank you. You seem so tired in Paris, and you've had a hard trip. You'll find your room in order if you wish to retire. No, I think I'll rest here for a while. It's very peaceful. Just a moment. You won't forget your instructions about not talking. I shan't forget, Mr. Whitaker. And the servants. I like them to understand that they'll be paid handsomely if they don't talk. Is that all you're worrying about, Father? You're quite right, it is. If you'd only let me go out and take a walk, I'd be all No, 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 no. It is permitted to laugh at the old country doctor, but you must do that which he says. Please, you just stay in bed, just to, oh, how you say it, uh, humorize me. time we'll have of it now with our home converted into a hospital. But Stephen, the doctor said that Celia mustn't be moved. Now she's got Dr. Claudel pampering her too. Please, not a word against Dr. Claudel. If he hadn't persuaded the authorities to let us stay here, I don't know what we should have done. But it kind of them, I'm sure. Let us occupy two small rooms in our own house, upstairs, no servants, no place where a man can sit down in peace, nothing but soldiers tramping all over the place. Why don't you go back to Paris, Stephen? What's the use? Those two French detectives can't find Michael Harvey. What can I do? Anyway, if you think it's any picnic living in Paris nowadays, you're mistaken. All I needed was this confounded war on top of all my other troubles. That's all I needed. Stephen, do you really think the war was declared just to annoy you? Michael Harvey. Michael! Where is he? First, there's something we have to explain, darling. What? He enlisted in the French oh, army. Never mind the explanation. Tell me where. Where, where is Michael? He's downstairs. Now, okay. Mother, let me go. Celia, Celia, don't go. Let him go.
Helen. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. We found each other again. Permission to travel, monsieur? Oh, yes. Here it is. You are Monsieur Whitaker? Yes. And Madame Whitaker? And Celia Whitaker? This is my daughter Celia. And this is my daughter Jo. Who's just born here in France. All is in order, monsieur, but uh, it is necessary that we inspect the car. I want to talk to you. So Joan's my sister, is she? Yes. Father, you can't take her away from me like that. She's all I've got. You might as well have this settled once and for all. What do you propose to do when people inquire about the child's father? Oh, I don't care what people say. I don't care about anything. All I know is she's mine. Well, even if you don't care for yourself or me, haven't you enough sense to realize it'll be better for the child? Father, I... There's no place for discussion. The car's ready. Please get in. I took Joan home. And I got to thinking about you. I had to come back. I hope you don't mind. It's very kind of you. But I'm all right. You are all right. Any other woman I know would be crying her eyes out. I've had enough of crying in my life. I've done with it. No more tears. No more yesterdays. From now on, I'm fighting. It hurt me to see you hurt that way. Joan wasn't herself. It's this ordeal of parties and preparations. I know her nerves are on edge, but that's not the reason. What is that? The girl's in love with someone else. Well, if that's true, why didn't you tell me? They had a foolish quarrel. She's marrying you to punish him. Celia, do you really believe that? What would you do if you believed it? What could I do? Jilt her? I wouldn't know how. I haven't jilted many girls lately. You think you're being kind to her, don't you? David, you're a chivalrous, romantic, noble-minded fool. What do you expect me to say? Want me to call you some names now? Yes, if it'll make you feel any better. All right, then. You're very brave and sweet and beautiful. In fact, I think you're swell. David, I wish I could get as angry with you as you deserve. I think your feeling about Joan is very beautiful. You won't accept anything less than a storybook romance for her. You're quite right, I won't. I'm beginning to realize that she's more grown up than you. Even if you do understand my books. How do you know I understand them? Because you have a bad habit of understanding everything, much too well. Even you? Yes. All those awful things you said about me were true. Every one of them. Then why don't you do something about it? Look here, Celia. I can't just walk out on Joan. 
If that's what you mean. I couldn't look myself in the face again. And if she walks out on you? I don't think she will. Hmm. You mean you're afraid she won't? You set your mind at rest, she will. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see to that. Hello, Celia. Father, I want to talk to you. Talk away? About Joan. Joan? Mm. What is it? Father, we can't let her marry David Eastman. I see. I might have expected something of the kind. About the first time I can remember anybody in this family doing anything intelligent, and you want to stop it. What's the matter with Eastman? There's nothing the matter with him except that he doesn't love Joan, and Joan doesn't love him. Well, she's the best judge of that. And if you think I'm going to interfere, you're mistaken. Father, I don't want to quarrel with you, but... But what? Well, if you don't want to interfere, I will. What are you doing? I'm calling Joan. Hello, Joan. Oh, is that you, Mary? Mary, is Miss Joan there? Will you ask her to come downstairs right away? In the library, yes. Thanks. Celia, if you dare to tell... I dare anything rather than have her miss what you've made me miss. Joan won't listen to you. This time she'll have to listen because I'm going to tell her that she's my daughter. She's underage and she can't marry without my consent. Oh. Very well. I won't argue with you. Tell her. I'm sorry. Still, I don't know what came over me. All evening I hated myself for the dreadful things I said to you. It's all right, darling. I've forgotten all about it. Come over here. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Darling, I'm so sorry. Joan. There's, there's something I want to say to you. I never meant to tell you. And I don't like telling it to you like this. Don't hate me for it, please. Will you? You see, we're not really sisters. You and I are much closer than that, Joni. Celia. Celia, you're tired. Your nerves are all on edge. It's late, so... Let's talk about this in the morning, shall we? No, we'll talk about it now. Joan, dear, I'm so sorry. You know, Celia hasn't been well for a long time. Father. And this peculiar idea has been growing in her mind. I didn't take it seriously at first, but now... Joan, please believe me. Well... Better go, dear. I'll see you later in your room. <laughs> Father, I might have known you'd be too shrewd for me. This quarrel was of your own making. I didn't want it. But I can't, I won't have Joan know the truth. If you think I'm so contemptible, why do you stay here? You have a place of your own? Very well, Father. I leave in the morning. But I'm not licked. I'm not through yet. Good morning. Come right in, Miss Whittaker. You're not the maid I engaged. She couldn't come. Your father hired me early this morning. My name is Henrietta. Uh, this is Emma. I hope you will find us satisfactory. Where would you like these, Miss Cedar? Uh, just set them here. I'll take care of them later. Oh, Jim. Stop by the telephone company and get me an application blank, will you? I want to have a telephone installed. Yes, Miss Cedar. I'm sorry, Miss Whitaker, but I may as well tell you now that your chauffeur isn't coming back. He has his orders, too. I see. Well, this is very thoughtful of Father. But you're not by any chance planning to keep me a prisoner in my own house, are you? Now, Miss Whitaker, that isn't the right way to put it. We're only doing our duty. Your sense of duty is charming. Don't let me disturb you. Carry out your orders by all means. For the present. I'm speaking for Dr. Terry. Please discontinue this telephone at the end of the month. Yes. 
Dr. Terence is leaving town. Leaving town? Oh, hello. Hello. Excuse us for barging in like this. Come in. What's this about your going away? I read in the paper this morning you were just back from New York. I thought you were going to stay. No, I'm closing up the office. Next week I'm leaving town for good. Where on earth are you going? Nowhere on earth. I'm going to sea. I've got a job as a ship's doctor. Giving up your career to nurse a bunch of seasick women? I think it's dumb of you. You ought to know by this time that most of my ideas are dumb. But don't be stuffy. You know I didn't mean to offend you. But I hate to see you making a mistake like this. Well, it's good of you to come in to give me your advice when you're so busy getting ready for your wedding. Don't you think we ought to tell Dr. Terrence why we came? I wanted your help. But if that's the way you feel about oh, it... wait a minute. You know darn well if you need my help. What is it, Joan? Joan, dear. It's Celia. She's at the Burlington Cottage in the care of nurses, and Father won't let me see her. He won't let anyone go near her. Why? He says she's... She's not in a condition to see anybody. When did she go to the cottage? How did it happen? She... She was trying to stop me from doing something I'm going to do, and said things Naturally, that... Joan wants to get at the bottom of this. I thought that you could help. I... I believed at first that Father was taking away her freedom for her own good. But now... I don't know. You're a doctor. You're the one who can help her. Father will have to let you in. Take it easy, Joan. I could get her free in no time. I could force my way in easily enough. But that isn't the right way to do it. I think Mr. Eastman will agree with me. Well, of course I agree. We don't want any scandal to hurt either you or Celia. But you don't understand either of you. I've got to see her. She's been so sweet to me all my life. And when she needed me, I was cruel to her. I'm going to see her. I don't care what you say. Well, look here. You're not the only one who cares about Celia. We want to help her as much as you do. But there's only one of us who can make the first move, and that's you, Miss Eastman. If you tell her father that you want to see Celia, you won't be refused. Celia, I brought you a visitor. Good to see you again, Celia. I can't tell you how glad I am to see you, David. Celia. Remember your promise to me this morning. I was telling her she mustn't get too excited or exert herself. Her strength mustn't be overtaxed. We'd better do most of the talking. I've been explaining to David there's nothing really wrong with you that's serious. It's awfully good of you, Father. Is there anything I can do, Cynthia? That sounds as though you didn't think she was happy. Why, well, she's had a heart set in living in this house for heaven knows how long. Isn't that so, Celia? Yes. But maybe it's not good to have a wish come true. What do you mean? I wonder if David will understand. I mean, sometimes getting what you want makes you a prisoner of, of your dream. <laughs> Isn't that just like a woman? You only have to give them what they want to prove that they don't really want it. <laughs> well, all the same, maybe there's some little thing I could do. Get you some books, perhaps? If Father doesn't think the strain of reading would be too great. Why, of course not. But remember, nothing exciting. Well, if it has to be something sleepy, I can send you some of my books. <laughs> <laughs> David. Oh, yes, yes. We must be going. There's nothing I can do for you, then. I'm very anxious to get Eccles back, David. I am, too. But unfortunately, the woman went away and left no address. She promised to write, but evidently the letter's gone astray. I'll get Eccles back. You ought to know by now that when I start something, I always finish it. Maybe I can help trace her. I'd be very grateful if you could, but after all, there's no hurry. Goodbye. I, uh, I forgot my cigarette case. The ushers and bridesmaids line up in pairs, the shortest ones first. They uh, march uh, two by two at a dignified pace. The proper tempo can be arrived at only by a most careful and painstaking practice. Oh, 
one that is too fast and abrupt tends to detract from the solemnity of the occasion. Whereas too slow a pace is apt to result in, in an unfortunately funereal effect. <laughs> this is a nice wedding rehearsal, David, if you like wedding rehearsals. Personally, I'd rather spend a nice afternoon in a dentist chair. If we can agree on everything as well as that, we ought to be happy. Cheer up, Joan. After all, this is only the rehearsal. You mean the worst is yet to come. Look here, young lady, that's not very kind. I'm sorry, David. I miss Celia so much. Mr. Eastman? Where is your best man? He won't be here till tomorrow for the wedding. But you needn't worry, he's a very experienced best man. He's almost a professional. This is the cooperation, I guess. Oh, take your place at the altar, please. Is everybody ready? Stephen, throw that cigar away and give the bride your arm. Where's Joan? Oh, how many times do I have to explain? The real bride never takes part of the rehearsal. She only watches. Oh. I'm taking her place. Uh, you give me away. <laughs> With pleasure. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of... Oh, no. Uh, excuse me. I, I thought this is where you made that speech. Uh, you know, um, if any man can show just cause why these two should not be joined together, uh, let him speak now or, or else. Uh, this is where I come in. See ya. See ya. Joan, darling, you don't know what it's been like without you. I didn't realize how much I needed you till Echoes. Where did you come from? From Canada, by air. See, this is a pleasant surprise. What is the meaning of this? Maybe there's something in your book that will cover the situation, Aunt Harriet. I wouldn't want to break any laws of etiquette. Do I say, I know just cause? Or am I supposed to shout, I forbid the bands? What are you doing here? Oh, yes. You didn't exactly invite her here, did you, Father? You didn't invite her to the Burlington house either, but somehow it didn't seem to stop her. If you'd like to see the two unhappiest nurses in St. Louis, I'd advise you to look up Henrietta and Emma. What? Oh, you might have difficulty finding them. They're probably still running from Eccles. You dare to dismiss them? Oh, no, she didn't dismiss them. They were very glad to resign after she'd got through saying her little piece to them. It was something about the law and about what a judge and jury would say to two nurses who appoint themselves jailers. Oh, uh, by the way, David, I didn't thank you for getting Eccles back for me. Celia, I'm... Please come into in my... your study. I'll come into your study, Father. Oh, Eccles, wait for me. I may need you. Well? There's something I want to make clear to you. You could do as you please. I'm on the rocks. Financially. What? And if it hadn't been known that David Eastman was to be my son-in-law, I'd have been finished by now. Oh. Then that explains why you've acted so rashly. Well, I'm sorry, Father, but you can have my money if it's any good to you. That's very generous of you, Celia. But there's hardly any of that left either. I see. Well, I'm sorry for all of us. Is that all you have to say? Do you want to be penniless, Celia? All your life you've been used to luxury. Well, I can get unused to it. I'm not going to have Joan robbed of her chance of being happy. But I think she will be happy with Eastman. Now, why do you want to interfere? Because she loves young Terence. And I'd rather have her poor and happy than very rich and very miserable. What utter nonsense. Very well, Father, but you call that wedding off now, or I will tomorrow. You've tried that before. But don't forget I have Eccles this time to back me up. You never did know the value of money. But Joan... Wait a minute. Joan! Joan! You'd marry any ragged poet if you got the idea you were in love with him. But Joan's different. And I'm going to prove it to you. 
John, your sister thinks she can break up your wedding. Maybe she can. But first of all, I want you to tell her something. Do you want her to meddle? Didn't you go into this of your own free will? Yes, Father. Well? But I can't go through with it. What? I don't love David. I, I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused everybody, but... Now, look here. Until I... tonight, I thought I could go through with it, but I, I can't. I, I can't. It's all right, Joan. You don't have to. Hooray for you, Joan. Go ahead. As a matter of fact, Father, I don't think we needed Eccles to prove that she's my daughter. Come in. Hello, Dana. I'm glad to see you, David. Thank you. Mind trading? As if you ever could. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Holmes, uh, could you explain to me how you happened to find Eccles? Oh, quite simple. You see, you gave me clue number one when you told me about the letter that had gone astray. Mm. Shall I demonstrate, my dear Watson? Why demonstrate by all means, my dear Mr. Holmes? Letter? Astray. It made a big letter, but then it went astray in a big way. Quite so. I figured that your father, um... Uh, father. Thank you, that'll do very nicely. That your father would want to, to have echoes. Echoes? Far away. I concluded that if a telegram... A telegram? A telegram? No, a very short one. Short history of the world. Very well, my dear Watson, very well. If a telegram came for Eccles, that he would open it. And if the telegram said that Eccles' mother was very ill in England, she had to rush right over, that he would forward it. Proceed, Mr. Holmes, you interest me strangely. So I sent the telegram. But how did you get the address? Oh, tut tut, a mere trifle. I knew that he'd want to get the message to her as quickly as possible. That would mean, Mr. Holmes, giving Eccles' address to the telegram office. Exactly, my dear Watson. So without even pausing to put on my false whiskers, I went to the telegraph office. Uh, the telegraph office. Me. You do think me rather a dragon, don't you, Zinni? Dick to your story, Mr. Holmes? Uh, quite so. Quite so. So I said to the lady, I want to send a wire to Miss Martha Eccles in Canada. Have you the address? And the lady said, certainly, sir. We just got a message to forward to her. Exactly. Clever, these anthropologists. We'd make a great pair of detectives, Celia. It was nice of you, David, to give aid and comfort to the enemy. Are we still enemies? Well, I did what I warned you I'd do. I had to do it, David. I, uh, I'm more than a sister to Joan. I know, Celia. I guessed it. I saw Joan slipping out of the house a few minutes ago with a very determined look. I was wondering if she was going to that someone else you told me about. I hope so. You don't seem very unhappy about it. I'm very happy, Celia. Oh, I'm, I mean to say that I, I would be if... Well, I might as well make a clean breast of the whole thing. Celia? Everything you say will be used against you. Careful, David. Too late for that now. I've already been careless. Careless enough to fall in love with a maid of honor. Well, one way or another, you're bound to have Harriet for an aunt, aren't you? I know I had no right to fall in love with you, but you had no right to be so lovely. Well, war's over. You win. I'll be a generous enemy. What are your terms? Unconditional surrender. Uh, I surrender. Nervous, Joan? No. Only, I wish we were just having a quiet wedding like yours and David's last week. 
We did cheat on Harriet, didn't we? With only a justice of the peace and you and Richard for witnesses. Celia. Hmm? There's something I've been wanting to ask you for a long time. What's that? Was it true what you said that night about not being my sister? No. No, of course not. Only seemed the only way of bringing you and Richard together at the time. But I have been almost a mother to you. Haven't I, Joe? Now, 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 now! You cried at my wedding. You're not supposed to cry at your own. You mustn't keep the bridegroom waiting. Hurry, darling. No more tears. 